Hi, this training is how to run an experiment or create a scenario in En-ROADS as part of the En-ROADS Climate Workshop or the Climate Action Simulation game. Before I get into it, I want to make a point about why we're asking people to mentally simulate scenarios before you actually run the model. There's this great quote, W. Edwards Deming said, no theory, no learning. If you don't have a theory about what you think is going to happen, you're not going to learn anything from a simulator or other experiment. So what you're going to need to do is help participants get clear about what they think will happen in the world if we were to enact some sort of policy before you use the model to show what it says. Create a gap between the two. Don't just use this as an answer machine that just shells out crystal ball futures or tells people insights. Take the time to mentally simulate. That'll be right in the middle of this order of things that you do to run an experiment or create a scenario. Okay, so here's how it goes. Someone will suggest something in your workshop or in your game. Oh, I think we're going to have a new technology. What would that do? So what you do first is you restate back to them in the terms of the model. Like, yeah, a new technology. Well, we call that new zero carbon energy. It could be thorium fission, it could be nuclear fusion, or something else. And we simulate it here and there's a description underneath you could show them. What we're imagining is that it comes out of the lab in 2023. It takes about 10 years to commercialize and then it grows faster than anything else has ever grown because it's so cheap. It is 20% below the cost of coal. You could show that result right here if you want to show the cost of electricity from this supply when you have the graph. So lay out what it is and then say it's right here. We're going to click this button right here to see what it does. Then say, well, imagine if we did have such a supply. What do you think would happen to temperature? Right now it's headed to 3.6 C. What's it going to be after I do this policy? Super cheap thorium fission or something like that. And you can do it by having people call out their answer. They can write in chat in Zoom. Here we have a poll that I did with some students where I asked them to very clearly vote for one of five different temperature ranges. Ask them to commit themselves to what they think the temperature is going to be. Then you can ask questions such as, well, before I do the test, what are some co-benefits you'd want to capture? Or what are some equity considerations that ought to be discussed as, as well as the climate benefits? So here there's some tips. If you click under the I button and scroll down, we give you some suggestions, but you can ask the group what they think. In particular here with this one, it's this is nuclear of some sort. What happens to the spent fuel rods? Whom does that affect? Next thing, before you hit the button to simulate, tell people where to look. Direct their eyes somewhere. So in this case, I would say that there's going to be an orange wedge on top of all these other wedges. Watch what it does. And then watch the other wedges as they change. So you ready? Here we go. There it is. There's the orange wedge. And I'm going to run and hit replay last change over and over again. You'll notice it goes three times through three iterations every time you hit it. And say, look, you can see the new zero carbon energy growing. And then you see shifts in coal, oil, and gas renewables as well. Let's play out what happens. Well, if we have the changes that we see here, greenhouse gas net emissions goes down. See the blue line departing from the black line. Again, what I'm doing is directing people's eyes. And then over on the right, look and you see 3.6 going down to 3.4. Now, back over to this, most of you thought it was going to do a lot, lot more of a reduction. What happened? At this point, don't just tell people the answer. See if you can draw out of them. What do you think happened? And then you're correcting their thinking and guiding them towards the correct answer. So in this case, if they didn't just nail it, I would say, well, let's notice some things. In what year do we see greenhouse gas emissions staying out of the atmosphere? Well, it's not till the 2040s that you can see a gap here starting to to 
be created. It's about the same through all the way through the 2030s. What is going on? This is when you can start looking and seeing what's going on in the system. In this case, we have investments in coal, oil, and gas from the 2020s to the 2030s, all of these years. And this is infrastructure that lasts on average 35 years. It takes a long time to get rid of the existing coal, oil, and gas, and also the stuff that gets built while we're waiting for this new technology to get created. So the long lifetime of energy infrastructure means that it takes a long time to actually get this to grow. So there's reason number one. Reason number two, run this again and say, which wedges do you see shrinking? Well, you see a shrink in coal, in black and brown, and gas in blue, but also wind and solar in green. Let's go and look at wind and solar. Wind and solar down here, renewables. Um, uh, wind and solar, actually I'm gonna look at a different version of wind and solar. Wind and solar final energy demand here, it shrinks a lot. You have the new zero carbon energy taking the place of the old wind and solar or the, the potential uh, future wind and solar. So what you have is the a very good supply taking this place of really what would be best, which would be the renewable wind and solar supply. That's reason two. Reason three is, well, in this case, why does new zero carbon energy spread around the world? Because it's so inexpensive. So we have cheaper energy. Look at the cost of energy. Energy costs go down. What happens to the incentive to conserve or to promote energy efficiency? If we have inexpensive energy, well, there isn't quite as much of an incentive. So energy demand goes up a little bit. That's the third reason we don't have a huge contribution. It's because energy use goes up as, at a time when we need it to go down. So there are three reasons that we have such a modest contribution. The delays, the impact on other re renewable energy and other zero carbon supplies, and then what we call the rebound effect or the boost to demand. So then the implications, what does that mean? We can't wait for technology to save us. We can't wait for innovation to figure our way out of this with new technology. We need to do many other things. In this case, you could also add that things like electrification help, but ultimately there are other things that need to keep coal, oil, and gas safely in the ground earlier to get down towards two degrees. All right. So to summarize what you just saw, and mind you, that is a very long explanation showing you all the steps that you could include. Particularly late in a game, late in a workshop, you're not gonna take all of those steps. But here they all are. Restate what people are offering. Explain what they mean for everybody. Translate it to the real world in some way. Show where it fits in En-ROADS, where they can get information about it, what slider changes. Early in the workshop, ask them to mentally simulate, run their mental model, forecast the result, and talk about why they think that's going to happen. Often, ask them to imagine the equity considerations and co-benefits they'd like to capture. Tell them where to look. Direct their eyes. Then when you simulate, replay last change, replay last change over and over. Talk them through the near-term effect and through the long-term effect. Explain, and this is probably the most important, take the time to explain why the system is doing what it's doing. Take the time to do that. Don't just use it as a black box model that gives you an answer and then your explanation is that the model says so. No, talk people through what's going on in the system. Summarize what they learned and explore what it means for their leadership on climate. That's the full list of nine. Go get them, everybody.